Now, I, I told you that what was going to happen was that there was going to be some real frustration when the authority and lordship of Jesus slammed into people's personal desires and personally strongly held beliefs. And that's what you see happening in verses 60 through 71. They, they, they say, this is too hard, right? It's not that they didn't understand. It's that they weren't doing it. It's not that they're like, I don't understand what he's saying. They were angry because they knew what he was saying and wasn't going to do it. They weren't going to have it. They could tolerate Jesus as the one who fed them. They could tolerate Jesus as the one that healed their diseases. They could tolerate Jesus in some of his sermons. He had some good jokes. They would not tolerate him as the king of kings and lord of lords. And as the pastor of this church for 16 years, 16 I was a 28-year-old when you guys hired me. It was just crazy. Crazy. Like that, that whole, uh, you been to seminary? No. Okay. Have you ever led adults? I mean, college. Oh, well, okay. Do you want this job? Uh, sure. Let's go. Right? Um, in 16 years, here's what, I, here's what I could just tell you. That there have been a lot of men and women sit in the chairs in front of me that take notes while I'm preaching, that lift their hands while we're singing, And all of a sudden, the authority of Jesus collides with a strongly held belief. And they go, I will not give that to you. And they choose their own deity, which is no deity at all, to the offer of life. They choose, if I may, the sweetness of sin that overpromises and leads to destruction over the promise of the bread of life that fills us and leads us unto eternal life. They do this around, see, like here's what our culture's saying. Your identity is in your sexual orientation. Your identity is in what you own. Your identity is in how much you make. Your identity is in how people perceive you. Your identity is in what tax bracket. Your identity is in what party you're in in regards to politics. Your identity is in this. Your identity is in that. And Jesus is going, no, no, your identity is in me. And all of those other identities must submit to your identity in me because that's the path to life. And I'm trying to lead you into what's good, not into what will harm you. You can't see, and so you'll choose the gummy bears and chocolate rivers over real sustaining life. And it's not going to seem that way to you. It's not going to taste that way to you. It's going to feel right and good, and you're going to wake up in your own vomit. And I have... For 16 years, watch this play out. And I'm telling you, I am confident that I am looking at men and women right now who are going to have a collision with the Lordship of Christ and they will choose their own autonomy and what they want over what Christ has commanded and they will wake up. It'll, it'll seem right and good and what they should do and what's best for them, contrary to the Word of God. And they're going to wake up one day in their own vomit because that's what sin does to us over promises and then destroys over prom- this is what you need to do to be happy destruction this is what you need to be happy destruction this is what you need to be happy destruction this is the story of humanity and yet the invitation continues to go out to those many of whom want no part of it why do you spend your money on what does not satisfy you well, why do you drink what cannot fill you listen to me and live says the prophet. Come, buy wine and milk without cost. Not your will, his gift. Not your effort, his grace. Come and eat and live. The richest of food, the choicest of foods, and live. What are the choicest of foods? His flesh, his blood, his death for your sins. 